Hey everybody, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. My name is Angela, if you're new, and in today's video, I'm going to take you guys along and share with you five delicious dry rub recipes that I think you guys may enjoy, especially this holiday season. We are already well into the month of October, and as we are approaching the holidays rather quickly, it's nice to try and get things done in advance if you can. I'm all about prepping in advance to make the cooking season a little more hassle-free. That's usually when we have get-togethers with family, friends, hosting, and it's just you can easily run yourself ragged in the kitchen. So to make life a little bit simpler, I wanted to get this video up just a little bit in advance before the holiday season so you guys can give these a try and see if you like it. And you guys can also get these made up before the holiday season really kicks off. So I'm going to share with you five dry rub recipes, starting with a rub recipe for a turkey. Now this is great in a smoker, but it's also absolutely delicious if you roast your turkey in the oven. For this smoked turkey rub, you're going to need three tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of smoked paprika, two tablespoons of kosher salt, one tablespoon of black pepper. A coarse black pepper is recommended, but if you don't have that, you can just use a regular ground black pepper. One tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of rosemary, one tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of thyme, half a teaspoon of sage, half a teaspoon celery salt, and a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now you can store this if you want to double this, make extra to have on hand, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a pint sized jar because I think that's what's going to fit best. And I'm going to use my canning funnel. This is something that I do with my dry pantry mixes as well, just to make it a little simpler to transfer into. And what I'm going to do is just use a spatula and I'm going to carefully get all these ingredients into my mason jar. Okay, and once you have them all in here, you can get a little whisk, you can use a fork, you can just put a lid on and you can shake it up. But because of that brown sugar in it, I like to use a fork personally. It's a little too small to put in my kitchen blender if you have not seen my previous video. I did some of our pantry, our dry mix pantry recipes in that video. And I like to use my KitchenAid mixer to really blend that up well to make sure nothing's clumped and everything's just right. This is such a small amount though. You can use a food processor if you'd like or a coffee grinder. If you guys watched my previous video, then you know my coffee grinder died. <laughs> we have had that for 15 years since we got married. It was a wedding present from somebody and it finally kicked the dust. So what you're going to do after you get that mixed up really well, you are going to get a cap. You can use the lid in the ring that your mason jar came with. I can a lot, so I'm constantly disposing of my lids. So I have these for storage purposes. I'll leave a link down in the description box below if you'd like to get these. I think I got these at Walmart, but you can find them on Amazon. And I'm just gonna give it a little extra shake. This probably could have actually fit in an eight ounce mason jar but this will work just fine. And there is your mix. So directions for using, if you basically are going to take your turkey, you can use this for a turkey breast, a whole turkey, and you're going to brush the turkey with some olive oil. And you're going to take this and sprinkle over your turkey. I, if you're using a turkey breast, you can do both sides of it. If you're using a whole turkey, you can just sprinkle lightly. So once you have that olive oil on, you're just going to sprinkle to coat it. And once you have a really good coating of the seasoning, that's it. I don't personally like to rub my, my dry rub mix into turkeys because I feel it, especially with that oil, it really clumps up a lot. So I just give it a nice coating on top of that oil and leave it as is. I don't rub it in. I don't have a video of me making it right now to share with you to show that, but it will clump up otherwise. So just generously coat your turkey and that's it. You can also use this on other meats as well, but this is a recipe for a smoked 
turkey. If you don't want the smoke flavoring, you can also just use regular paprika. I personally love the smoked paprika in a lot of my recipes. I do that with my rib recipe as well. The smoked paprika gives it a nice flavor, but if you'd rather stay away from the smoky side of it, you are smoking it in a smoker. But if you want to roast it in the oven and don't want that, you can just go ahead and use regular paprika. Okay, you know when you have a baked ham and you get the packet of glaze mix to put on your baked ham. If you don't have that packet or you want to try something different, this is a delicious dry rub mix with the perfect blend of sweetness and also some really yummy spices. This dry ham rub, you're going to need one cup of packed brown sugar, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, half a teaspoon of mustard powder, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, and black pepper to taste. I used about quarter teaspoon right here. Okay, now we are going to put our ingredients. I did find an eight ounce mason jar. We're going to go ahead and put our ingredients in here to get them mixed together. Now I will say that this is a good amount for a let's see I'd say a five five to seven pound ham and oh that might not fit okay okay I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> it's one cup of brown sugar and I put it in here I have no room to mix my ingredients and we're actually going to just store it in a pint glass jar after all so once again, I would say this is perfect for a five to seven pound ham. You can double this if you want to do a larger ham, like 11, 12 pounds. And we're just going to get that mixed up. And when you do your ham, you, you can do this two ways. You can, you can cover your ham and you can sprinkle this on and cook as your regular directions say to you for your ham. But what you can also do is set your oven to about 550 degrees and sprinkle this all over on top of your ham. Put it in the oven at about 550 degrees for about 20 minutes and that's going to give this a nice caramelized look to it. And then you can go ahead and follow your directions for the ham as the, the little recipe temperature card calls for with your ham. So once again, this is just something that you can use in place of those packets that you get for the glaze. It's really delicious. It's got some yummy flavors. It's got the sweetness to it, but it also has some really good different spices mixed in there to make it very flavorful. And then that is ready to go ahead and add one of these airtight lids to my mason jar and yeah that fits perfectly and there we go we have our dry ham rub recipe okay next up we have a dry rub recipe for prime rib roast this is absolutely this makes an outstanding prime rib there are so many different ways of making it and I've switched it up throughout the years but this is an absolutely delicious seasoning blend to add to your prime rib roast. For this seasoning blend, you are going to need a quarter cup of ground black pepper, coarse is best, a quarter cup of salt, a quarter cup of garlic powder, two tablespoons of paprika, a quarter cup of onion powder, two tablespoons of seasoning salt, and one tablespoon of celery salt. Now this seasoning mix is roughly for a eight to ten pound prime rib roast and what you're going to do is take your prime rib roast and you're going to brush it with some soy sauce this is optional you could do it with oil but I like the flavor with a soy sauce so brush your roast with soy sauce and for like I said an eight to ten pound prime rib roast you're going to want to use about half a cup of this seasoning mix. So take your half cup of seasoning mix and just gradually sprinkle it over your prime rib roast and just rub it in really well 
into the soy sauce that's coating your prime rib roast. And you can marinate this in your fridge for up to about 24 hours. 12 to 24 hours is perfect. Usually when I'm marinating things, I'm very much behind and it's usually like six to eight hours. So you can do that too, but the longer it sits, the more flavorful it's going to be. So once again, half a cup of this and after you've brushed on your soy sauce, then that's all you're going to do is coat it. And I had a really big jar. <laughs> I didn't need this big of a jar. Okay, I meant to actually have a, a smaller jar. I don't need a quart. I don't know what this was out for. But anyway, I'm going to get my lid. I'm going to put our lid on, and it is all mixed up. And there you go. There is your prime rib rub. Okay, our next dry rub recipe is going to be for brisket. Smoked brisket preferably, but you can go ahead and cook this in your oven if you don't have a smoker. We just recently got a smoker a couple months ago and we have not had one beforehand. So the oven was my go-to for everything. But this is an absolute delicious seasoning blend. I am going to say real quick before we get into the ingredients of this seasoning blend that when you're making brisket, I've made this so many different ways. I've made it in the oven where it turns out phenomenal. I've switched it up, used barbecue sauces and all that. When you are using dry rubs, I 100% recommend using mustard to coat your brisket first. And a lot of people might not know that that's actually a tip. The mustard not only helps tenderize the meat a little bit, but it also works as a really good binder to hold your seasonings or your dry rubs in place. And not only does it work as a binder, but when you're cooking, you know how your meat tends to shrink a little bit. Well, a crust when you're smoking, especially when you're smoking brisket and you get that nice crust on the outside, that's also known as a bark. And it gives it a nice bark to the outside of your brisket where the meat may shrink a little bit, but the bark tends to not shrink as much as the meat. So it'll give it a, a perfect, beautiful outside. So this is a delicious blend of flavors, but I highly recommend slathering. You can look it up all over online, um, slathering your brisket with mustard first. And a lot of that flavor, I feel, cooks out. It, it kind of cooks out during the smoking process, a lot of that mustard taste, but it definitely enhances, I think, the flavors of your seasonings. For your smoked brisket, what you are going to need is two tablespoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of black ground pepper, or of course, I just happen to only have ground on hand, one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of ground coriander. I personally ran out of ground coriander, but the closest substitute for ground coriander is going to be cumin. So I used here two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of brown sugar, and half a teaspoon of cayenne. Now the brown sugar and the cayenne is optional, but I feel with a teaspoon of brown sugar, it helps give a little bit of sweetness to the spices. And then if you like a little bit of heat, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper is a great addition to this blend as well. Okay, what I am going to do is get my funnel and we are going to get these mixes into, you can honestly, you know what, I'm looking and I'm like, nope, we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to do my little my little half pint size because I think this will be perfect for it. We are going to just scrape these spices into the funnel. And just be careful with your powders because it does tend to stick to the funnel if you're using it. So you're going to also want to pat or scrape down your funnel as well. And also when you apply your seasonings on top of the mustard, say you go ahead and do use the mustard as a binder, you are going to want to kind of just press. I feel like pressing the seasonings in, into the mustard a little bit is the way to go. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I feel like when you are using your, your spices on top of the 
mustard, just gently pressing it in. You can rub it in. I personally like to press it in. And it definitely, oh, it's very, very flavorful. This smells delicious just mixing it. It's making me so happy that we are doing short ribs for dinner. It's actually a little bit too late to get them in the smoker, but I have a recipe. I will link it in the description box below for how I do my short ribs. I need to get one of my white caps for my smaller jars, but try not to sneeze. Actually, all those, all those spices. I will leave a link in the description box. It's kind of a hurried video because I had last minute plans that evening I was trying to do and a store was closing down the hill. So I think I actually asked my husband to take over at the very end. So it seems a little chaotic. I, I, I love the cook with me videos where it's all relaxing, quiet music playing. But in all honesty, when you have eight kids, it's chaotic. There's going to be chaos. We have cats, we have dogs, we have all kinds of things. So I think I got a couple comments in that video like, oh, it seems so chaotic. And really it wasn't. I was just trying to plan something last minute to do. So the video is a little bit more, more, more like my real life. Let's just say that I'm cooking. My kids are usually yelling. There's dogs barking. There's all kinds of back and forth in the kitchen. And that's pretty much how real life is for me. I try to with these videos and I didn't get to for my pantry mix video have things measured out in advance that evening half my measuring utensils were in my dishwasher and I was having to use like smaller amounts because I had people like oh don't you know that this many tablespoons is a quarter cup and I'm like yes I do but my quarter cup is in the dishwasher it was it, it was a little bit more chaotic so I kind of talked and chatted it up a little bit more in that one to kind of make up for time but I do like personally doing videos like this where everything's kind of laid out ready to go it makes it go a little quicker less confusion and it's it's pretty clear the instructions so anyway I'm gonna go get a lid for this all right last but not least is going to be a delicious dry rub for ribs now my favorite way to make ribs there to die for involves a lot, a lot of ingredients and a lot of them are wet ingredients. So when I want something that's not for a special occasion like those ribs are for cookouts, hosting during the summer in the 4th of July, I make them every year, they're so good. But when I want something quick and flavorful and just as delicious, a dry version of ribs, this is my go-to seasoning mix. So I'm going to take you guys along and share with you these ingredients for an absolutely delicious rib dry rub. For this rib rub, you're going to need about a quarter cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, one teaspoon of ground mustard, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic salt or celery salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. And just on a side note, I actually ran out of mustard powder, so I bought these in bulk a while ago from Azure Standard when I made my pickles. <laughs> and uh, um, just saying, that saved my life right now because I actually, a couple recipes ago, ran out of mustard powder. So if you have a mortar and pestle, or you have a coffee grinder or spice grinder, you can totally make your own mustard powder. But yeah, just letting you know in case you didn't. All right, so I'm going to be using this for dinner tonight. I'm just going to put this inside of a half pint jar. And this is absolutely delicious. Now, I did not mention this in the beginning of the video, but these would make wonderful gift giving ideas for the holidays coming up for Christmas. I think this would be a great gift idea. Honestly, um, you could wrap these up much nicer than what I'm doing and really, you know, make it look nice. You can print out some labels. That would be a really good idea if you're into the homemade gifts for Christmas and gift giving. So, Keep that in mind as we're getting closer to the holidays. And if that's something that you guys would like to do, once again, there's just some really cute ways of packaging these up. I actually need my fork because this is not doing what I need it to do. So, and there we go. That is our rib C 
seasoning blend. And like I said, I'm going to throw this on the spare ribs. And uh, like I said, my stuff doesn't usually marinate as long as it probably should, but I'm going to do this this evening because it just smells, it smells so good. It smells so good. And all these different smells in the kitchen have been making me really hungry. <laughs> so I need to get on dinner. I actually missed lunch today because I was so busy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If this is something new for you guys and you haven't made your own spices and seasoning mixes before, it's really easy. There's a lot of great ideas out there. I do plan on sharing more of these in my videos, um, the content that I'm going to be coming up with. I do have plans to do some more some more of these type of recipes that are more geared towards the holidays, meaning, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, even New Year's, just different ideas to make your life a little bit simpler and save you guys some time in the kitchen. I also had somebody ask if I was doing the Thanksgiving dinner videos this year, and I just wanted to say yes, I do plan on doing that again. I'm actually contemplating doing two different videos, so I'm hoping that I can get that up um, before Thanksgiving to give everybody a chance if they want to try the recipes. I will link down in the description box below the video that I made last year. I actually cooked for Thanksgiving and filmed, so it was like an after Thanksgiving video that was released, but I do hope to plan it a little bit earlier this year to get you guys some ideas. If there's any type of videos that you guys would like to see, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. Also, feel free to ask any questions that you have. You can reduce the sugars in these. I know that's one that is asked very often. Can you use an alternative sugar? Yes. Everyone has different tastes and I don't sit there and judge people when they put a teeny tiny amount of sugar in something and I try it and I'm like, I would have done this differently or that. So you guys make these how you guys like them. If you don't like a lot of heat, leave the cayenne pepper out. That's why I said in a lot of these, they're optional. If you don't like as much sugar, cut it in half or use a different sweetener. That's totally fine. The point is we're just using dry ingredients. So these are shelf stable. A lot of people asked my last video, which I actually forgot to put in the description box. And then we went out of the state for about six to seven days. So I, I did not put it in the description box, but the you know, the best buy for these type of things. I'm going to be very honest. Seasonings are pretty much indefinite in my eyes. It, they are going to lose potency the longer they're stored. I have used seasoning blends that are like four or five years old and they're totally fine. They're, they're totally fine. Now the ones with the brown sugar, me personally, I, you know, with, the, with a little bit of the moisture and brown sugar, I don't know that I would store things longer than six to nine months with, oh, with these rubs, I'd say for best quality, definitely use within six to nine months. Can it last longer than nine months? Yeah, I, I definitely know so because I've used them past that time, but you guys use your own judgment. You can also put these, throw them in your freezer if, if you don't feel comfortable storing something on your shelf for a long period of time. But the point is once again, having things that are shelf stable and that you don't have to rely on refrigeration or freezers or even power for that matter. And you can just store them in your pantry. So once again, I hope you guys give these a try. They're absolutely delicious. If there's any more type of videos that you'd like to see, leave them in the comments below. Usually the first hour after I post the video, I'm pretty active in the comments section. After that, it's hit or miss. It's really hit or miss. When I have quiet moments throughout my day. Sometimes I'll check and respond to comments, but sometimes I mean to, and I don't ever get back to them. So I do read pretty much every comment that does come in. I just don't always have time to respond to them. So once again, I will chat with you guys for the first hour in the comment section below. And I have a couple more recipe videos like this coming up soon. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and God bless.